This is the Scrap Metal Commodities Recycling and Economic Report by Ben Lee and Raleigh and Goldsboro Recycling, March 5th, 2018. Last week, commodity prices and economic reports were mixed, and new U.S. tariffs were announced. U.S. steel production rose and continued slightly ahead of last year and well ahead of two years ago. Oil rose about a dollar a barrel to 64.37, remaining near a multi-year high it hit a couple of months ago on good global demand and supply. U.S. oil production hit a new all-time high as OPEC continues to keep their production down, causing prices to be somewhat high. High prices allow U.S. oil producers to continue expanding. Iron ore rose a dollar to $80, near a high for the year on good global demand, balanced with good global supply. Scrap ferrous prices were steady, and unless there is a change, many believe prices will actually be up this week as demand remains very solid. Hot dip galvanized steel remained at $9.60 a ton, near its multi-air high on good demand. New tariffs could have this up soon. Copper fell 10 cents to $3.13 as we move to using May COMEX. While down, copper remains near December's multi-air high. Copper is down a penny this morning to $3.12. The five-year chart shows copper slightly off last December's multi-year high. Copper inventories fell slightly on a good balance of supply and demand. Aluminum was mostly no change at 97.7 cents, remaining near the multi-year high of two months ago, again on good global demand and supply. New tariffs could change this as well. Aluminum LME inventories after their recent rise remain near about eight-year lows on a good balance of supply and demand. President Trump announced a 25% tariff on imported steel and 10% on aluminum. This will support U.S. steel and aluminum makers and hurt many countries with the top 10 for steel in order are Canada, Brazil, South Korea, Mexico, Russia, Turkey, Japan, Taiwan, Germany, and India, with China at number 11, which is about 2% of our imports. If tariffs happen as announced, finished goods prices will rise close to the 25 and 10%. It's not clear what effect this will have on scrap prices due to, as an example, some U.S. scrap that went to Canada could stay here in the U.S., so no change in demand. China's Manufacturing Purchasing Manager Index fell to 50.3 in February, down a full 1% from January, the largest fall in more than six years. The growth in output and new orders slowed, but business confidence and raw materials on hand actually decreased. U.S. February vehicle sales fell to an annualized rate of 17.08 million from 17.16 in January. While 17 is a great number, sales have softened in recent months. February's U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Manager Index jumped to 60.8, the highest growth since March 2004, about 18 years ago amid stronger business conditions and faster job creation, while new orders and production eased a bit. Printing and primary metals grew the most, while apparel and furniture fell. Overall, a great performance. U.S. initial unemployment claims fell to 210,000, the lowest number since 1969, almost 50 years ago. Great economic news. Wall Street had another turbulent week with the Dow ending down 772 points to 24,538, with markets nervous about the steel and aluminum tariffs. Safety is key to all we do at Ben Lee, with efficiency a close number two. For decades, we were known for our triaxle 80,000 GVW 40-foot roll-off trailers. Today, there is more focus on DOT to stay at 80,000 GVW and hauling optimization to support profitability. That means our tandem axle Bridgemaster, yes, two axles, is now fast becoming the new standard in 80,000 GVW roll-off trailers. It weighs a full 6,000 pounds less than our triaxle, so it carries a much larger payroll. Call us for a quote. As always, feel free to call or email me with any questions, and we hope all have a safe and profitable week.